This is the 3rd of September 2023. I just want to talk about the open door. God has set before man an open door. And when the door is open, no man can shut the open door. And when the door is shut, as in the days of Noah, no man, not even Noah, could open the door. God is sovereign. God has put an open door in front of every single person. And there are some, without naming names, I've talked to over the years, they recognize the truth of that picture. There is an open door set before me, but I'm not going to go through it. Of course, it is a figure of speech. An open door is an opportunity, a new job, a new place to go, uh, something to do. And God places an open door in front of every single person. Jesus Christ is said of himself <clears throat> that he is the door. Well, how can a man be a door? Well, you know, I'm sure, if you're mature in Christ and you've been taught well according to Scripture over the years, you know the shepherd of his sheep. At night, he puts them into a, a sheep pen and the gate way, the gateway is an open space and the shepherd lies across that open space and he becomes the door. The shepherd himself becomes the door, keeping his sheep in at night. Penned in, hedged in, contained. Like in the days of Noah, the ark was a physical box with one door in, one door out, and God shut the door. To the ark. And Jesus Christ said of himself that he's the shepherd and the sheep come into the sheep pen at night and the shepherd protects his sheep by himself becoming the door across the doorway. And of course the shepherd with his staff, his rod and his staff, to comfort the sheep but to bring down on the head of the devil to crush the head of Satan so the doorway is the way of Christ into the kingdom of heaven no one can enter into the kingdom of heaven unless he comes in through Christ he is the way to heaven, Christ himself. And the doorway is the opportunity that Christ gives every single person to come in through the doorway into a place beyond this world, the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus Christ, apart from being the shepherd, he is the king, he is the saviour, He's the Lord and he's the teacher. So coming in through Christ into that place that he, Jesus, has prepared for us, a place for each one of us in the kingdom of heaven. And Christ and Christ alone is the door that no man can shut. So if you have been a church leader and you've been picking and choosing your staff, your servants, your employees, and that has been your will to pick and choose people to build your church with people, and you picked your team, you chose your team because you're the captain of your team, you're the owner of your team, you're the board of directors of your team, and you very much over the years have picked and chosen key players to play in your team according to your vision, 
according to your colors for your team. And you even gave your team a name. Your church. You even branded your church with a name. And then you expanded your vision for your church to take over this world. Now, I don't need to name the modern day denominations that grew from one man who had a vision. He went to America. He caught the vision of how to grow your church into a mega church by methods from America. Consumerism, marketing, sales, three spirits of this age. How to be prosperous, how to engineer and grow and manipulate your American dream, how to become the president of your nation, your denomination. And every denomination does have a president, a king, a senior king who is above all the other kings. And even though they may say we don't have a senior pastor or a senior elder, the fact is you do. Every business organization has a chief executive officer, has a major shareholder. Even amongst the board of directors, there's always a managing director, even if it's a uh, a joint managing director board, there is still one of the managing directors who has slightly more power than the other one. And I'm talking about the way of business of this world. And of course, I'm an ex-business director and our little, tiny little company broke away from uh, East Anglia's biggest well-known uh, advertising agency in East Anglia and there was a breakaway by one of the directors, one of the account executives and a creative director or creative person and they formed the three of them a small little outfit here in Norwich UK and and the big agency that I was working with I knew all these people who had left of course, the big agency rubbished them as being cowboys. Oh, they're a cowboy outfit. They don't know what they're doing. But eventually, as things have it, and all part of God's plan, I bumped into somebody who worked there, and I said, have you got any jobs? And by the end of that day, I was made an offer I couldn't refuse. But that's the world of advertising, marketing, and sales public relations, and it is very much a spirit of this world. And our little cowboy outfit grew very quickly to become East Anglia's biggest agency, overtaking, quotes, the parent company. And if you imagine denominationalism is just the same, little breakaways of, of two or three people, they break out of a denomination they start their own thing, their own army, so to speak, and they become the best church there is, the best company there is, and you might say company of saints. And whilst their intentions may be good and honourable and true, to worship God in a better way, a more Holy Spirit-filled way, more charismatic way, more Pentecostal, more Bible study, more house groups, more of this, more of that, more of that. Very soon, that church group becomes an old thing. And people are looking for a new thing. We've been told, Trevor and I, over the years, start your own church. Start your own charity, start your own church. And that must be 30 years ago. But it, it wasn't God's will. It isn't God's will. When you understand that we are the church, the people, Ecclesia, and we don't have to start a company to demonstrate we are the church of two or three. We don't need a brand. 
when you look at the scriptures, this is why the Bible was written down. This is why the Holy Spirit prompted the early uh, disciples, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists, just to name all five, to write these things down because the early disciples started to fall asleep. They started to die. And they knew that if they didn't write it down, oral tradition being what it is, the words could be corrupted. And by 2000 years, of course, it's doubtful whether we would even understand who Christ was. But of course, the Holy Spirit was given. The early disciples obeyed Jesus' command to wait in Jerusalem until the gift of the Holy Spirit is given. And then the Holy Spirit led them to go out of the upper room to preach the gospel in the marketplace to the mob who had effectively put Christ on the cross. Crucify him. Manipulated by the spirit of Pharisees, of course, the mob from, from being the crowd who proclaimed Hosanna, son of David, King Jesus is here. They became manipulated by the Pharisee spirit to become the enemies of Jesus, demanding his crucifixion. That's what happened. How do we know? It's recorded in scripture. All scripture is God breathed. This is why it is absolutely crucial not to be, quotes, just spiritual, but to have a balance between Scripture, written down Logos, and the Holy Spirit, giving us prophecies of Scripture and dreams and visions. So somebody recently had the vision or a dream, either or, of a door and they saw themselves going through the door but one foot was left outside the door the doorway so they were going through the open space of the doorway going in christ through christ in entering in to the kingdom of heaven but they said that in this dream or vision whatever it was one foot was left outside and they interpreted it themselves as one foot was in the world. But most of the body, let's say 95% of the body of that particular individual was entering through the doorway, Christ, into the kingdom of heaven, but one foot remained. And of course, I saw that as uh, I saw it in my mind's eye as a picture and I said, I saw the heel, I saw the enemy, the spirit of this world, the God of this age, Satan holding his foot, his heel, grasping his heel. And I told him this, Trevor and I were there, another brother, we told him this. And I, and I remembered uh, Jacob, he was grasping the heel of Esau when the baby Esau came out of the womb Jacob was the second born. Even though his hand had come out first, and they tied a red cord to it, but when the, the baby came out, it wasn't at Jacob, it was Esau came out first, and the twin was grasping the heel of his brother. And that was noted and written down in Scripture. And Jacob became known as the deceiver. So here it is, deception. This world is deceiving uh, the church. This world has deceived the, the church. The spirit of this world is a deceiver. The devil is the one who blinds the minds of unbelievers. The Pharisees were the sons of the devil. And Jesus told that to them, to their face. And then uh, towards the end of Matthew's Gospels recorded, Jesus uh, proclaimed seven woes against the Pharisees. But did they repent when the prophet told them, the woe is coming to you, Pharisees? Did they repent? Well, of course they didn't. 
They didn't. They crucified him. And, and this is what happens with people in leadership. Legalism sets in. Our way is the best way. And when God raises up someone, uh, a nobody, to, to go and visit that church, and he sees or she sees something not right, and a prophecy is given, already the minds of these, let's call them church owners, stakeholders, owners, shareholders, the board of directors of their companies, that can't be of God, because if God was telling us that, he would talk to us directly through our own prophets who sit on the board of directors. We have our own apostles and prophets, pastors and teachers and evangelists. And if God was telling us that in our particular denomination, he would have told us directly. But then they forget. Down history, we have someone called George Fox who stood up in the Anglican church and he told them the truth and they threw him out. John Wesley preached the gospel to the Anglicans and he was thrown out. Yes, these video I touched on again, 80% of the bishops of the Anglican church in the UK in their general synod made a vote to bless the unblessable relationships. That is not God which proves to anybody with, with a, a sense of understanding those bishops are not born of God. They are who they are. Managing directors, if you like, all of them, uh, politicians, ministers of politics, keeping the church together politically as much as possible. But of course, when they came out to vote for uh, the church ministers to bless the unblessable, uh, that is a step too far. And they've been making many steps in the wrong direction. But now this is uh, the point they've reached and they have to repent. And other Anglican bishops have told them, you're wrong, you must repent from this decision. God says no, he will not bless the unblessable. And so the word of the Lord is hold the line. Truth versus lies. Light of Jesus versus the light of Lucifer. The counterfeit light, the false light. The counterfeit ministers, the false teachers with their false doctrines. We're in Christ. Christ is the door Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the foundation. We are not Jesus. But by God's will, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, he has enabled us to be born of Christ, to be in Christ. But we never become Christ. The church, we're not Christ, we're the body of Christ. And Christ is the head. The head of the body of Christ is Christ, the king of his own church, which he has built, is building with living stones, not made by man. No man has made the spirit of man, only God. And God is spirit, and we're made in God's image. God loves the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but they will receive eternal life. All you who claim to be backsliders, you're not born of God. You can't keep going in and out of the door. You can't be playing hokey-cokey with God, one foot in, one foot out. It's all or nothing. All or nothing. Don't leave one foot in the world. You yourself need to rebuke Satan and tell him to get his hand off your life. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin and he, Jesus, alone can cut you free. But you need to humble yourself, 
come to Christ, bow to Jesus, declare him to be Lord of your life, number one, the King. Repent of your sins. Be born again today, this very moment in time. 3rd of September, 2023. We'll leave it there. I'm going to sit in a church service amongst denominational people, amongst churchgoers, some of whom are born of God, some of whom are baptized with the Holy Spirit, some of whom I can sit with and fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the person. My communion is with God and his people. One day of salvation at a time. One hour at a time, one minute at a time, one meeting with one person at a time. Where two or three are gathered, God says, I am with you. God is in us, with us, and his spirit goes ahead of us. It's time to leave Egypt and all the spirits of this world. And if you're dragging one foot behind you, you need to command your foot into Christ every part of you. Jesus talks about cutting off the hand that sins. That includes the foot, that includes the eye, the ear. Cutting everything off from the spirits of this world is your decision. Ask Jesus, he will do it. He will set you free from your prison, set, you, set the captives free, release you from your prison. He will bind up your broken heart. He will heal you and deliver you from all evil, permanently. And you'll hear his words, now go and sin no more. Let your attitude be that of Christ Jesus, who was tempted in every way, yet did not sin. So I'm sitting in the city centre with my signs showing now on the sides of the clipper, and there must be about 200 people have seen the signs, one person has, uh, if you like, put their thumb up. The rest are just look at the signs, whether they're believers or not, I don't know. We pray for them all. The word of God goes out and never returns void. Jesus loves you, Psalm 23. Pray for us here in Norwich, UK. We're praying for you. God bless you. Talk again soon, according to God's will. God bless.